up, what's up? It's your boy, Incredible. Here on the Incredible channel with a new DCUO Tank Guide video. And I know it's been a while since I did my last um, DCUO video. I think it was about a year ago since I, since I posted my last DCUO video. But as you can see, I'm back on posting new videos with with different different video games and you know different content and stuff like that so i'm gonna be more active nowadays but this right here this is that tank rage video and in this guide video i'm gonna be giving different varieties of loadouts that you can use different weapon selection that you can use and also the different specs that you can use so i'm gonna just go in detail you know about about all of those categories right there and then from there you can just you gotta you know mix and match and then just see which works for you once you start using once you start using rage and tanking and actually getting into instances and raids then you can see for yourself which ones work the best for you and your style of gameplay so let's just get into it so the first artifact is the mystic symbols of seven this grants you the ability when hit by an enemy increases your defense by three percent and caps at the maximum 15 percent and that's at level 80 when you get it at level 120 you receive 10 percent increase in your healing received as self heals for a tank and at level 160 which is max you regenerate a small amount of health based on your restoration and each time you are struck by an enemy so when you're pulling enemies in every time they hit you you are getting a little small amount of health back so very very useful as a tank and as you can see when you reach 160 it grants you also 5% health and 3% dominance in your stats also with the 3% increase in restoration the second artifact is the manacles of force and that level 80 is grants you the ability unshakable which when an enemy hits you for about 30 percent of your health bar you are now granted the ability to absorb 50 percent of incoming damage and reapply it over time for the next three to five seconds and this ability has a cooldown for every 60 seconds. When you get it to level 120, you are granted a secondary ability, which is called Resolute. And this just gives all your shields a reduction of 10% on its cooldown. And when you reach maxed 160, the unshakable ability is now increased to 5 seconds. And the cooldown for it to reapply is decreased to 45 seconds third artifact that you should use as a rage tank would be the eye of gemini and this has different abilities depending on which role you're in and in the tank role you are granted the ability caster's watch and when you use your supercharge it restores three percent of your health and a small percent of your supercharge every second and it puts a green circle under your character and anyone who is within the circle is granted heals for the amount of health that you received when the caster's watch ability was activated so by level 80 the caster's watch ability only lasts for four seconds and you get zero percent of your supercharge back by level 120 it lasts for four seconds but you get two percent of your supercharge back and at maxed 160 it lasts for six seconds and you are granted two percent of your supercharge back when the ability is activated your argument slots should be filled all four in dominance and also dominance in the head mod content slots. Now we're going to go into how you spec your skill points in your tank. So the first thing you would do is go to your weapon and max out your weapon however you want to. Just put all the moves that you do use. In my case, I use hand blast and I'll show you a little bit later why I use hand blast, but you can do any weapon 
that you like as a tank and that's the beauty of being a tank is that all weapons are usable and you just pick whichever one you like the most and you feel is most effective for your style of gameplay next you go to your movement tree in this case my movement is acrobats on this tune so i would go and do the first one and go all the way down on the side to get the innates followed by your escape supercharge which is perfect poise and i know for super speed i think it's called dash attack and i don't remember the one for flight because i haven't been flight for a while but you'll know what it is because it'll say something about swift escape and it'll also be usable while controlled in the iconic tree the only two things that are usable in this tree are the two shields the first one being the amazon deflection one of the best shields in the game and then the other is the hard light shield which is also a strong and usable shield but if you're not going to use these then do not spec into them and don't waste any points on them and last you will be going to the stats points tree and as a rage tank you will be using the focus hybrid and as hybrid focus you gain power back by using your weapon attacks so any of your weapon attacks grants you power back then you're going to spec a minimum of critical healing chance 10 points followed by critical healing magnitude another minimum of 10 points followed by maxing out the health as much as you can. Now, depending on how many skill points you have, this is gonna vary where you spec next. So if you have more than 10 left over, you spec 10 into dominance and then the rest into restoration. Now, if you spec the 10 into dominance and you have more than 40 points over instead of specking into the restoration you would spec into the heal critical chance and heal critical magnitude first then the rest into the restoration so you need about a minimum of 290 skill points so that you can successfully spec everywhere that you need as far as the weapon getting all your innates supercharge and also being able to put the stats in the stats tree where you need them to be so you know in order to max out your health in order to have at the minimum 10 points in your dominance which is what's needed and also to max out your critical healing magnitude and your critical healing chance so once you're able to at least put the 10 points in the dominance max out the health and max out the critical healing chance and magnitude then you just dump all the rest of your skill points into restoration now restoration is more needed as a rage tank than the dominance because once you have the 10 percent that that 10 percent is enough for you to have the dominance that's recommended for the highest content which would be whatever the highest um t t raid that you're allowed to go into. So like for instance, both of the highest raids for T9 is Fellowship of the Arcane and Shadow Gotham. And for the Elite, you need at least 10,000 dominance. So you should be well over 11,000 dominance with the gear and being specced into at least 10 points within the dominance tree which is all you really need. As you can see for my tomb, I only have 80 level artifacts for all three, plus, you know, arguments, gear, and it all equals to more than I should have for the elite raid. So all you really need is to put 10 points into dominance so you can get the 2% extra bonus and that should be enough for you to have over the recommended dominance. 
since 10 points is what's needed to successfully tank, you put everything else into restoration because it's more beneficial when it comes to the heals that you receive from getting hit by the ads and getting hit by the boss. So your self heals benefit from all the points that you put into the restoration. So the higher your restoration, the higher your heals receive. So to recap, your goal in hybrid is to max out critical healing magnitude, critical healing chance, health at max, 10 points into dominance, and then the rest into restoration. Okay, now let's get into the actual loadout itself and the variations that you can use within the rage tank and loadout. So. Let's start off with the standard, right? There are three moves, no matter what your rotation looks like, that you have to put into your rotation. Those three moves are severe punishment, that is a must, because that is the most important move in your entire loadout. That is your that is your everything move. Then you have obviously your pull, rage bringer. And you also have the other pull, your secondary pull, or sometimes, well, yeah, secondary pull, is without mercy. So you must have these three in your loadout at all times. Now, it doesn't matter how you align your moves. You can line them as you see fit, and that feels the most comfortable for you when you're playing and for your fighting, your fighting style. But I put it there, and I'll show you why I put it there uh, a little bit later. So these are the three most important moves in your loadout that you must have, no matter, regardless of any other, any of the other three that you choose. Now, severe punishment it gives you your heals. This is this is what gives you your heals back when you're getting hit by your opponents. So when you're fighting the boss, when you're fighting ads, ads and the boss. PvP, regardless of whatever you're doing, this is how you get your heals back. So once you pop this, every time somebody hits you, you gain that hit that they just hit you for right back in health. Then you have Without Mercy. This is your pull, but this is your close range pull. And it gives you about, it's about like 10 to 15% of your health back every time that you use it which is a great it's a great move to use and it also gives a little juggle effect on the ads then you have your main pull this is the pull that you use in order to grab every ad that's on the field no matter you know how far they are from you and it also gives you a little heal back too it's probably about like five percent of your health back when you use it so these are the three main moves now the move that you also have to use with this is called a rage crash move. So if when you when you use this move and it's activated, you have a certain amount of time until you have to use another move in order to cancel it. So that if you miss that move, all the damage that you that you previously took from the ads and or the boss will automatically come right back to you. And usually depend on how hard they're hitting you it'll just just ko you right there on the spot like you just you just dropped so in order to prevent this you have these five moves it's called eviscerating chain as you can see in the de description it says rage crash is ignored same thing with outrage revenge plasma wretch and dreadful blast now you could use any of these to rage crash with but they each kind of have a different um like a effect on the ads when you're using them and on the boss when you're using them so for instance right when you're using eviscerating chain it's a pull so it's, it's kind of like having an extra pull with you also while you're using it to rage crash outrage is more for a lunge so when you use it you lunge without having to worry about being block broken 
plasma wretch is a quick rage crash move. So it's like very quick and it's just it's just you just shoot it. So it, it it's like it's basically just having a really quick rage crash. Dre Dreadful Blast is a juggle move. So when you use it, it pops all of the ads in the air and you can also combo it to make it uh, do another pop on the third the third hit. And then last is Revenge. Now Revenge to me is the weakest out of the five. It's also it's kinda it's basically like um outrage, but the only difference is that it's close range lunge. And it also has a it also has a combo too, but it's only a two hit combo instead of a three hit combo like the outrage does. So you must have and that's a must. You must have one out of five of these moves to go with severe punishment so that you do not get that damage back from all the ads and the boss when it calls for you to rage crash. Now with the three moves that you must have and the one rage crash move that, that is your choice, now you have two spots left. Now in these two spots you have different stationary and you cannot move at all you can jump cancel out of it but once you jump cancel out of it you lose the effect of the shield and then you have redirect rage it has a low cooldown and it's still a shield but it's weaker than the other two so basically it's your choice of which shield you want to use but shields are always good to use as a tank so you it's your choice really it's all it's all it's all by choice you have to you have to play and tank a little bit to like really gather what loadout works for you the best but these are just suggestions that you have to use so the last move that should be in your loadout is one of the two supercharged modes the only ones that are used as a tank is vindictive which is found in the rage tree already and perfect poise which is found in your movement tree now, depending on what movement you are, it might not be perfect poise. It is either dash attack or I forgot the other one for um, for flight. But you'll know what it is because when you when you look at it at the description, it'll say supercharge, and then it'll also say an um, a swift escape. It'll have the same like basically the same um, description as this one has for crowd control and swift escape. The other ones are melee ones, so you don't really use these as a tank. You can if you want to, but I don't see why you would use it. It's kind of, That would just be a waste because Rage as a battle tank is doesn't really put out much damage, so there's really no point for you to go try to do a, a battle tank as a Rage tune. But, you know, everything is all choice. So, Vindictive, when you use it, the same way you use severe punishment and you have to use the rage crash, vindictive is, a, is it works as you don't have to use rage crash. So it's basically giving you the same ability as severe punishment except it takes away the whole rage crashing. It only takes 100% of your supercharge which is actually great but and you could activate it and deactivate it whenever you see fit. So like whenever something's getting too crazy, you activate it for as long as you need it, and then you deactivate it by pressing it again. 
perfect poise, on the other hand, works as a immunity slash shield. So when you use this, you are granted a shield, which is really is is so strong. It's basically like you're immune to everything, and it also gives you like a, a times two speed which is great for evasion if you just in case like things are getting really crazy and you want to just gather yourself for a quick second you want to get everything under control you pop this get out of there you know get yourself together and then go right back into what you were doing with the ads or the boss so personally i think this is probably the best supercharge as a tank for any power that, that's including all the other powers, you know, atomic, earth, ice, fire. Like, this is the best supercharge as a tank as of right now. So, this is how your standard loadout should look as a tank. Not in any order. You can place them at wherever you want. But this is the go-to rage tank loadout. Outrage, Rage Bringer, Severe Punishment, Without Mercy, Redirect Rage, and Perfect Poise. You have your Severe Punishment for your heels back. You have your AoE pull. You have your Long Pull. You have your Shield. You have your Supercharge. And then you have your Rage Crash move. Now, you can you could swipe your Rage Crash move with any of the five Rage Crash moves. You could swap your your shield with any of the other two shields and then you can you can swipe your supercharged move with the other supercharged move and they think now let's talk varieties for rage loadouts you have loadouts that are more used for ad control and then you have loadout that is more for survivability so let's start with the ad control loadout you want more ad control you will you will use these moves dreadful blast and violence along with the other three in your supercharge you can swipe the supercharge out if supercharge is not really your thing for either a shield either one of the three shields or you can use Irie, which gives you health back but is to me it's not really worth it because the health that it gives back is barely 10%, which you get using Without Mercy or Rage Bringer. So this is how the loadout will look. This is how the loadout will look, and this is how the price will look. You use a Dreadful Blast, it pops the ads in the air. On the first initial hit, and on the second combo. The second combo is used by holding triangle once and holding triangle again. Triangle twice. So then they pop up and then they pop up again on this one. They also pop up when you use without mercy. And also when you use violence. So all three of these moves pops the ads in the air. Now this next loadout would be the shield loadout and this shield loadout is more for people who are more into the fighting style of staying alive and surviving so you'll have whichever rage crash move usually it would be either eviscerating chain or outrage and then you'll have two shields you can either have redirect rage and hard light shield or redirect rage and Amazon deflection. I would go more with Amazon deflection because hard light shield tends to glitch out sometimes depending on like if the healers are running shields and then they pop their shield and then you pop yours after, sometimes it doesn't come up, which is it's weird, but that actually happens in raids <laughs> sometimes, raids and alerts. So you have to be aware of that. Plus, Amazon deflection has the same exact cooldown and it's a stronger shield. The only thing is that you got to be aware of not pressing any buttons when you use it because you could pop yourself out of the shield. As if to say like if you was to um, jump cancel by mistake, it will pop you right out of the shield and then you'll, gain, you'll start gaining all the damage that you were trying to avoid from popping the shield. 
but this is what you would use and you would really rely more on shields keeping you from being damaged and getting damaged if you're using all these moves and you're really filling the shield loadout and you want another shield i would say it's not recommended but it is it is a possibility depending on how your fighting style is i would say you can put in the supercharged so however you line it it would be supercharged in the two shields now you lose the heals that you receive from the without mercy but you do have a lot more survivability due to the shields so it's really it's really kind of banking more on the redirect rage being popped at all times and then when you're not popping that you would be popping amazon deflection or you can put all three shields if you don't like the supercharge you can use hard light shield so basically it's just running three shields but the perfect poise out of all of them i would say is the best shield because when you use it it gives you that super speed to go along with it so the shield loadout is a little self-explanatory if you know how shields work and you use shields in the game but this next loadout is the two rage cancellation loadout now this relies more on if you kind of you see yourself rage crashing a lot and it's like damn i rage crash a lot i need something to like kind of help me not rage crash as much you would go with you would go with this loadout you will use whichever cancellation that you usually use and then you would use another one to have in your loadout as well as also following either a supercharge or a shield so for instance already on cooldown you still have the other one just in case but you missed the first one so if you're doing your thing you're doing your thing you press it by mistake or something you don't have to worry because you still have the other one in the back ready also if you're gonna use the two rage crash loadout I would suggest also using Dreadful Blast because it has that effect of juggling. But once again, this is all preference. So you could use any of them. Also, the Plasma Wretch is actually a good move too because it's so quick when you use it. You just shoot. It just, it just, you just vomit. You do the Rage Vomit and it's like really quick. So this is one of the quick rage crashes. So if you was to play with a dreadful blast or a Vincerian chain or outrage, it would be good to have as the secondary rage crash move. So this is how your loadout would look for your for the two rage crash move, and then you could swap out plasma wretch and Vincerian chain for any of the five rage crash moves. Now for the single target loadout, which is used mostly on bosses for elite content or when you're trying to separate the boss from the ads and you have to get certain feats. So for feats and for elite runs, you would go with this loadout, Eviscerating Chain, Rage Blast, Severe Punishment, Without Mercy, Redirect Rage, and your supercharge now rage blast can be exchanged for your movement pull move in my case is grappling line attack because I am acrobats tornado pull is for super speed and there's also one for flight or you can go into the iconic tree and get mesmerizing lasso instead the only thing is the cooldown difference for each of these is different. For those, it's three seconds, and for this, you can just spam it, and you get a little bit of heals every time you spam it. But this is the loadout that you would use for a single target. 
is very effective against bosses because of the two pulls with the cancel with the rage cancellation move and also with whichever move you're using to taunt and also because of the shield and also without mercy gives you heals back as well once you use it now we're gonna go to the weapon selection as a tank for rage and for any tank when it comes to tanking, you can use any weapon that you like. It all goes by preference. And it all goes by which one feels the most comfortable with your specific fighting style. There is no such thing as the wrong the wrong weapon choice as a tank. It's all preference. Now, what I've learned from tanking within my years of playing DCUO and I've tanked with every power, I say that the hand blast martial arts and the shield are the most effective when it comes to tanking now really hand blast really works well with rage specifically it does I'm, I'm not really sure how it works with the other powers but i know for rage it's good but when it comes to just tanking period usually the go-to is martial arts and the shield now i'm gonna show why i like using uh, hand blast when it comes to rage tanking and it's because of these effects that you're about to see right now I like using hand blast because the move Tap square hold square is a knockback So along with that and moves like without mercy dreadful blast and The rage bringer it works very well to keep the ads under control and juggled and just scrambling at all times so for instance i'll clip without mercy with severe punishment and then you use the hold the, the tap hold and knocks them back you can knock them up in the air with that see how it's not see so like they're, they're basically juggled at all times like at, for, for the most part sometimes they'll break out and then they'll have an immunity for a little bit but still it's, it's good to like keep the the ads under control so like so with the ad control loadout and the hand blast it's really really good to just keep the ads under control you don't have to do a lot of like um tumble master and 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 kiting is more of a like a brawling kind of i'm in the i'm in the mix kind of loadout and weapon choice so that's the reason why i like it it has other moves like um, scissor kick that also knocks them up if you could get that off. The only thing is with that, sometimes they'll lunge you out of it, but still, it's still a good move. So when it comes to hand blast, that's a good move. The scissor kick is a good move. This is a good move because it knocks everybody back. And also the hold that. That's, that's not I messed it up but that that move right there the uppercut is tap tap hold and you can just launch them in the air and just keep them, keep them elevated so I really like hand blast for those reasons but it works very well with the other moves see keeps them keeps them nice and just juggled does very well with ad control and that's the reason why I like the hand blast now as a tank I say the most effective and the go-to weapon is the martial arts now the reason why I say use martial arts is because for every move it has an effect on the ads so I'm going to show you for instance every tap hold from one to five is an effect on the ads so tap square hold is the knock up tap tap hold is the stun three tap is the knock back four taps is also a knock back and then last one five tap 
is the AOE stun. Now look at that. That's the reason why I say martial arts is the most effective because of that five tap hold square AOE stun. It hits everything within the vicinity of you. So if you're rage, if you use without mercy and you have all the ads at you, then you use that five, everything in the vicinity is stunned. And it's done for at least a good amount for you to get your stuff together and be effective within the raids and stuff like that. So only thing is that it takes a little while to come out. So usually you just use that. You use without mercy, whatever. Then you use the stun and whatever other moves you would use within them in the middle of it. And then you will pop into a rage crash. So that's why I say out of all the weapons the go-to is the martial arts because of all the effects that it has for each move that is used now the second best weapon i would say for a tank would be the shield now the reason why i say the shield is because the shield also does well on ad control because it has a few stuns and a few knockbacks within all the the um, attacks that you use for it. So, that's the big stun. When you pop the shield into their face. So that's tap, 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 hold, and then you get the stun out. So that's six taps, and then you hold it. So it's kind of hard to get to it, but the good thing with shield is that everything is combo, combo-able, if that's even a word. And it all goes into, it can all lead up to that six hit with the hold within the middle of it. You just gotta remember the combo. So like for instance, right? One, two, hold, one, two, three, and then attack. See how it kind of comboed with the hold? I didn't have to go all the way through the six taps and then the hold, I did a one, two, three, hold, tap, tap, hold. So all the moves are comboable into the, to the big stun. So you could do one, two, hold. You'll know when he's about to do the big stun because you'll see that, you'll see that movement. And once you see that, you're like, all right, I know he's about to do it. One, hold. Going to it, boom. When he does that right hit with it, when he does that right, the um, the left hit with his hand, you'll know he's about to do the big stun. The big stun is coming up next. So for every move, three knockdown. Also that one too. I forgot about that one. That's the seven. Instead of the six stun, when he throws the shield at him, is also the seven stun. That knocks him up in the air. And it knocks a lot of ads in the air. So that's the reason why I say that shield is probably superior to all the other ones as uh, alongside martial arts. Now, I, I recently liked using hand blast really due to the style that hand blast gives on your character, for my rage character, and also because it's a quick ad control, as you can see with the whole tap square hold square along you know because because martial arts and the shield sometimes you have to get to the move so a lot of times you got to be wary of your rage crash because your rate while you're in the middle of trying to get to that move your rage crash could be sneaking up on you at any time see how it came up so it's like sometimes you won't even be able to get all the way to there but usually you can depending on depending on how, how skilled the group is and how efficient you are with dealing with the ads and everything like that. So, but for choice wise, martial arts, shield, definitely the two go-tos. And I would say to practice and try out all the other weapons and just to see which ones work the best for you and your fighting style. If you want to practice which weapon works the best for you and you want to test out all the weapons, I would say to warp to the Chinatown police station 
and you would go to the kiosk which is over here from the phase shifter from the watchtower and talk to this dude detective striker and there if you go down you could purchase very cheap weapons and you can test all of them out by specking into them so that you can be able to buy it just put one just put one skill point in each in each of the weapons and then you'll be able to you'll be able to buy each weapon and then you would just have to keep respecking and then you know specking all the points into the weapon and testing out all the moves for the weapon and how they work out with the loadouts of your choice so that's it guys make sure to try each loadout out on raids mostly to see which ones suit your fighting style best try out all the variations and make sure to leave a comment in the comment section on if this loadout was helpful for you and which varieties of the loadouts best suit you and if you have any feedback regarding rage and any pointers that can also be added to the video within the comment section tune in to the incredible channel for more content soon to come and other videos on other video games that hopefully you will enjoy see you guys